Good morning everybody and welcome to our thoughts for this morning. A few years ago I was outside a supermarket collecting for the big collection. A gentleman approached me explaining that he didn't have cash on him but he would be happy to give me something if I was to go to his home and collect some money. And uh, somewhat naively I suppose I went to this gentleman's house. And it was there that he told me his story of how at one point he had been in one of the Salvation Army hostels. He'd been set on the right path and had the opportunity to find some work. But he needed a set of tools to be able to do the job uh, that he was able to do. The Salvation Army provided the money to purchase those tools. This chap then proceeded to uh, give me an envelope which then contained a thousand pound. He wanted to replace the money that he had been given when he was in need so that we could help to support somebody else. And I guess there are many people that could tell similar stories. But the Salvation Army through its life houses wants to provide more than a place to stay. Of course, the basic essentials of accommodation are given. But more than that, we provide support for people to get their lives back on track. We provide a caring environment in which they have a chance to flourish. We all need the basics, food, warmth and shelter. But we also need to know that we are valued and that our lives have a purpose. The needs of people in our centres are very many and varied. And we need to provide something that is encompassing of all of those needs. Our life houses, care homes and all the other centres that the Salvation Army runs include spirituality 
as a key area of support and development. Sometimes those with very little materially can show us an example of great spiritual wealth. I've come across people who have almost nothing. And yet, like the widow with her small coins that we read of in Luke 21, they give to others from the little that they have. It makes me wonder whether having less material wealth gives us an advantage in spiritual wealth. It's almost as if when we have nothing, God becomes everything. When we're comfortable in our finances, material wealth and general well-being, there may be a danger that we get complacent. We put our trust and our reliance in our own resources rather than in God. When we have material comfort, good health and emotional stability, we may forget what it means to be in want. When we look at our own resources and when they're lacking and insufficient for our needs, it's then that we are forced to look elsewhere and perhaps that prompts us to look and to rely more fully on God. As he comes through for us and supplies our needs, our trust in him increases ever more. And again, maybe that was the case for the poor widow in Luke 21. The her circumstances had forced her to rely on God. He'd sustained her so that now she felt at ease, giving him the last coins that she had, knowing that he would continue to provide for her. Jesus spoke in Luke 18 of it being hard for a rich person to enter God's kingdom. And I wonder whether this is part of the reason that it's all too easy to rely on that material wealth to support and sustain us. Only God can ultimately be relied on to remain solid and secure. Only he will never let us down. When we lose something in which we've placed our reliance, the thing which makes us feel secure, it can make our whole world crumble and collapse. The best our own resources can offer is that they may last throughout our lives, but they offer nothing beyond that. After death, our wealth, achievements, family, work or hobbies are no good to us. Only Christ offers us eternal life. We were designed to be in a loving relationship with him and nothing else will quite fit that space in our souls. In Luke 18, we read that Jesus explicitly told the young rich man to give away all that he had in order to gain treasure in heaven. He reassured his disciples that although they had left their homes and families, they would actually receive much more by following him. To willingly let these things go isn't easy. Yet to have nothing, or to sense that we are in a state of having nothing, may just be the route into acquiring everything. We know that it's said that in addiction, a person has to hit rock bottom before they will be willing to accept that they need to change or need to accept help to make the change. And before a person gets to this stage, they may well have tried to combat their addiction by themselves or even deny that they actually have a problem. Acknowledging that the problem exists and that they cannot just solve it by themselves is the beginning of the recovery. In the same way, we all need to acknowledge our human addiction to sin and our need for God's grace. We're powerless to save ourselves, incapable of meeting our spiritual needs through our own resources. Put simply, we need God. Having nothing and acknowledging that fact is a humbling experience, but one which is often necessary 
if we are to let go of ourselves and accept God's way and his will for our life. This life will be richer and fuller than anything we have had before or could hope to have under our own strength. During the pandemic, many people have found themselves struggling without their usual work and social activities, and especially with the lack of human contact that this produces. For some, this has prompted them to spend more time with God in prayer, meditation and study. It's deepened their spiritual life in a way that might never have happened without lockdown. Suddenly, having nothing has led them to find something far more valuable than what they had before. Many recovering alcoholics find that their life after alcohol is better than it was before. Drinking, as with the misuse of other drugs, is often a way of dealing with emotional pain or mental health issues. And to deal effectively with the substance use, new and healthier ways to deal with these underlying causes are found. That can result in a person who is not only free from the negative effects, but is happier with their life, dealing with their issues, more in control of their mental and emotional well-being. They've not just returned to how they were before their problem, but they have achieved an improvement over and above that. Jesus experienced the effect of humbling himself, only to achieve something greater in return. Paul reminds us in Philippians 2 that Jesus made himself nothing or emptied himself, became human, was utterly obedient to his father's will and achieved, and achieved honour through his death. It was through coming alongside mankind in our weakness that he was able to do this. We need to come alongside people who are in need. People who may be struggling emotionally, spiritually, mentally, needing to develop resilience, self-esteem, a sense of purpose and other essential qualities. Those who work in our centres work and walk with them to support their development, to achieve the goals that they want in life. We're all at risk of having nothing. It helps us to empathise with other people when we experience similar things ourselves. We all need much the same things from life. We need the spiritual and mental resources to deal with difficult times and challenges that face us. For those who don't have those resources, life will be a constant struggle. But our aim is not just for people to have an adequate life, but to have the best life. We don't just want to give them a roof over their head, but we want to support and enable them to move on to a fully independent and fulfilled living. The big collection that we are involved in at this moment in time is an opportunity for all of us to join in supporting those people. It's an opportunity for us to play our part in helping people. We can learn from each other. We can allow ourselves to be challenged by those who have little and yet share much. We can gain an appreciation for what we have by entering into the lives of others. I'd like you to consider what you might be able to do during this time of the big collection. If all of us who are physically able can give one hour, just one hour, to stand and collect from the general public, so many people will be supported and helped and encouraged. By putting ourselves in a place where we hold on to nothing, we put ourselves in a place 
where God can bless us with everything. Our opportunity is to share with others and to give others an opportunity to help and support those in need. As we continue to think about people who are our service users, we just ask that God would strengthen them, support them, but also with those who work with them in very real and strategic ways. Think about what you can do and give God the opportunity of allowing you to work for him. God bless you and we'll see you again soon.